Good morning and welcome back to Storytime with Mr. Keck. Today we're going to be reading Billy the Goat's Big Breakfast, written and illustrated by Jez Albero, published by Doubleday Publishing. Let's dive in. Billy the Goat's Big Breakfast. Nat the cat made breakfast to share with her friends Billy Goat and Hugo Hare. She was going to make brec a breakfast treat with some lovely homemade bread to eat. Nat mixed up water, flour, and stuff until it was stretchy and springy enough, then left it to rise in a small gooey ball. That's when the doorbell rang in the hall. Hi, Billy, said Nat. Come in, take a seat. I'm ever so hungry, said Billy. Let's eat. He ran to the kitchen, and down he sat. We can't start breakfast yet, cried Nat. You've come too early. The food isn't made. The juice isn't juiced, and the table's not laid. And Hugo Hare won't be here until eight. We can't start without him. You'll just have to wait. Billy Goat sighed and stared at the bread. I'm not very good at waiting, he said. Why don't you lay the table, said Nat. You'll, you'll have waited a lot by the time you've done that. So Billy brought butter, jam, and three mugs, some knives and plates, and the juice in a jug. He slowly laid out the cups, knives and plates, then ran out of things to do except wait. But the food made waiting harder because his tummy kept saying how hungry he was. The juice in the jug looked zingy and yummy. I want some of that, cried Billy Goat's tummy. Billy thought that he'd take just a couple of sips as he lifted the jug to his slobbery lips. He gulped and he glugged and then he took a big slurp, put down the jug and then burped a big burp. Billy's tum was still hungry. It wanted some more. He looked around the kitchen and guess what he saw? There on the stove sat the mix for the bread. Have a nibble on that, his tummy said. Billy tried to resist. He knew that he should, but he felt so hungry. The bread looked so good. He closed both his eyes and gave up the fight as his mouth opened wide and he took a big bite. Yuck, thought Billy. This bread is too chewy. It should be all crumbly, not squishy and gooey. Just then someone called his name from outside. Hi, Billy. It's Hugo. I'm here, he cried. Billy tried to answer, but what could he do? His mouth was full of a big lump of goo. He just couldn't speak. He felt such a chump. So with one great big gulp, he swallowed the lump. Hello, said Billy as his friends bustled in. But Nat saw beyond Billy's big sticky grin. The juice was all gone to the very last drop and the mix had a bite-sized hole in the top. Nat turned on the oven and put in the mix, but then she was left with a problem to fix. Now there's not enough food to get them all fed. I'm just popping out for a minute, she said. Oh, Hugo, said Billy with a lump in his throat. I've been such a naughty, greedy goat. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was rude. But before you came in, I ate half the food. The horrible bread made my tummy rumble, and now it started to gurgle and grumble. His tummy did something else as well. It mumbled and rumbled and started to swell. Hugo could hardly believe what he saw. It was twice the size that it had been before. I'm back, cried Nat. Billy wanted to run. He didn't want Nat to know what he'd done. But Hugo stepped in and grabbed a big coat and threw it right over his friend, Billy Goat. Why are you all covered up? asked Nat. 
He's cold, said Hugo. Nat soon fixed that. Come sit by the stove and get warm, she said, and soon you can eat my freshly baked bread. So rumbling and grumbling under a coat sat a bloated and ever so hot little goat. But worse was the feeling growing inside of the secret which Billy was struggling to hide. Rumble, grumble, gurgle. I'm not cold, I'm hot, blurted out Billy Goat, and I've got a big tummy beneath this coat. I swallowed a lump of your bread, and soon my tummy swelled up like a great big balloon. Now I feel horrible deep down inside. I'm ever so sorry, Nat, he cried. Oh, Billy, said Nat, that bread was still raw. That's why it made your tummy so sore. It had to be baked, and the mix had to rise. That's when it blows up to double the size. She took out the loaf, and it smelled so good, just like a freshly baked loaf really should. But there's no juice, said Billy, and the loaf is too small. It's my fault there isn't enough for us all. But Nat said, that's why I popped out before. I bought us some muffins and juice from the store. They all sat down with a knife and a plate, and this time nobody needed to wait. They ate muffins and jam and butter all spread on Nat's crusty, crumbly, homemade bread. They swallowed and slurped it all down, and by then, Billy Goat's tummy was happy again. When the breakfast was finished, Nat made up a song, and both of her friends started singing along. Thank you for joining us today on Storytime with Mr. Keck. And don't forget to keep reading, keep learning, and keep loving one another. Bye, Lincoln School.